Ramsey was a remarkable artist. He's really not very well known and that's something that we want to achieve in this exhibition. We really want to bring the breadth of his work to public attention. He was dedicated to art from a very young age. So we, his earliest work in the exhibition is a tiny little kookaburra which he did when he was 14 and he signed and dated it. And it was obvious that he really wanted to become an artist. So there's really this sense of a prodigy, a child prodigy, because we've got to remember that he was only 16 when he went to art school. So in 1901, Hugh arrives in Paris and it's really a dream come true. He's in the metropolis where artists from all over the world have come together. He's also excited to be in this incredible place. So he's going and visiting the Louvre, he's going and visiting the Musée Luxembourg, and he comes back to his studio and he's just like on fire. He's really set to go. And he starts painting his own self-portrait because that's the easiest thing. It's the most ready model. And you see him, when you first look at them, they look really simple. But the more you look, the more you see he's actually bringing to them. So he's kind of bringing a bit of humor. He's in his dressing gown late at night. Sometimes he's dressed in a white jacket and it's like he's emulating John Singer Sargent, one of the great artists at that time, who was um, a hit in both Paris and London. And we also see him as a maker with his sleeves rolled up doing the work and sometimes in a smoking jacket, like he shows himself. This, I think, is a love letter to his fiancée, Lishan, and he's dressed up a little bit for her, and he has his paints. And if we look carefully, we see that he's not only a master of portraiture, but also of still life. And he decides he's going to enter into the great salons. You know, this was a dream of a lot of artists who went to Paris to get shown in the old or new salon. They were quite traditional, but, and they were very much mainly for French artists and, and other very established artists. And Hugh sends in a number of works to the new salon and he gets four accepted. Now this is just phenomenal because it's really unusual, let alone for an Australian artist in his 20s exhibiting virtually for the first time and he writes home to his dad and he can't believe what's happened. And he says, can you believe it? I've got four paintings when only one would have done, would have made me happy. And we have three of those works in the exhibition. Apart from getting hung in the salon, the second most important thing in Ramsey's career in Paris was to meet Dame Nellie Melba. And Hugh writes about her coming to his little studio in Montparnasse, and he says he was quite humbled by it, but she was so lovely. And she'd heard of his great success, and she's going, wow, I really need to celebrate this Australian talent. And he writes about just this extraordinary phenomenon, you know, how is this happening to me? But then very sadly, when he goes to London to paint her portrait, he gets diagnosed as being very ill with tuberculosis. So this is really a tragedy because he's at a peak of his career and he can't complete the portrait. So he comes home to Australia and Dame Millie Melba fortuitously came home around the same time and she commissioned him to paint her niece, Miss Nellie Patterson, which is one of his great works. And it's so fabulous to see it alongside Jeanne, two of the best portraits, child portraits in the history of Australian art. And so he comes home and his doctor tells him he's got to rest. Of course, his whole family are very upset and worried for him. And, you know, he's really quite sick, but he decides he's not going to give up. And so he's told by his doctor that he's got to rest. And what does he do? He starts painting his biggest painting yet. And he paints a portrait called the Equestrian Portrait, which is of his doctor's son. And he paints this huge horse and it's like, oh my God, what are you doing? He's doing just like this amazing work on this huge scale. And he just keeps going. And I think what he was really trying to do, he knew he only had a short time to live. And so he thought, well, what, what the heck? Just go for it, you know, give it my best shot. And then he goes on and he paints what I think is widely regarded as the masterpiece of his career. And it's called Two Girls in White. It's a homage to James McNeil Whistler, who he saw in Paris, and yet it's totally his own. And it's his sisters, it's Madge and Nell, and they're looking at their ill brother. And there's such concern in their faces 
but he brings out their personalities. There's Madge with her gloves and she's sitting so beautifully and Nell's more relaxed. There's one glove on and one glove off. And what he does that is really different, I think, is he brings them close to us again. And there's that real feeling that we're in their presence. And he paints with this kind of alacrity. He paints the, the dresses so beautifully, but it's that connection between him and his siblings and that closeness to family that was right there in the beginning is there towards the end. And you really feel it in this incredible painting. And one of the exciting things for me has to, been to see the relationships between the works unfold as we've been installing. And I really do feel like it's been one of the most special exhibitions I've ever had the opportunity to work on. And I feel really fortunate to have had that chance because I think what I've seen is somebody who is so dedicated and really true to his own vision. You know, he pushed the bar high and you can see him really striving. And then when it all comes together, you think, God, I hope you're looking down and you can see what you achieved. And for me, that has been one of the, the great things just to work on an artist who gave so much of himself in a short life, but a really brilliant one.